What's up, everyone? Tara Roberts here with 444, and I'm giving you five players that you have to fade in 2023. I talk about risky players all the time, and risky doesn't mean that you can't draft them. You just have to be aware of the risk associated with them and make an informed decision. But with these players right here, these are guys who I am just straight up fading, walking right past in my fantasy drafts. But before we get started, Remember to like this video and subscribe. And if you want more fantasy insights and tips, head over to 444.com slash plans and sign up for a subscription today. And exclusively for our YouTube audience, use promo code YouTube at checkout to save 25%. Now let's go ahead and dive right in. First up, I hate to do this to Mike Evans because this is not his fault, but I do have to fade him. Tampa Bay's offense took a nosedive last season and it's only gonna get worse from here. Despite running the most plays in the league, their run game was abysmal. The downfield passing attack, horrendous, and they struggled to score. The result was a team that led the league in pass attempts yet had the third least yards per attempt. Tom Brady was rapid firing dump offs to the running back and the wide receivers suffered. Tom Brady is gone and the Buccaneers have a new offensive coordinator, but things aren't looking any better with Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask set to take the lead. More than likely, Baker will be the starter. This is good news and bad news. The bad news, Baker Mayfield will be the starter. The good news, at least we know exactly what Baker can and can't do. And that's what makes fading Mike Evans feel like the smart move. What we know from Baker Mayfield is that he is more likely to support a guy like Chris Godwin. Evans had 77 receptions last year with only six touchdowns. Three of those touchdowns came in one game. I don't think that it's gonna get any better. Evans ADP isn't really that bad. If you want to invest in him, I don't blame you. Evans is going in a wide receiver range that I like to call guys with issues. Guys like Tyler Lockett and Christian Kirk that face target reduction because of hot new additions in town. Guys with team, quarterback, or situational concerns like Deontay Johnson, Michael Pittman, or even Marquise Brown. So drafting Evans isn't exactly going to tank your fantasy season, but I just truly don't think the upside is there. Evans could hit his ADP, but beyond that, I wouldn't expect much. It's just a fade for me. Moving on to the next player, Kadarius Toney. <sighs> Oh, Kadarius Tony. With his latest injury, his ADP did take a nosedive, but if that nosedive is making you feel inclined to draft him, I urge you to run in the opposite direction right now. It is so tough not to give in to Kadarius Tony. The Chiefs did say that they could see him as their wide receiver one, and if he were to actually hold that role and actually play a full season, he would be a top 24 receiver. Tony has had strong performances showing his true upside, including a 10 reception game, 189 yards in that game in 2021. We know his talent, but there are so many issues surrounding him. The former first round picks production has been inconsistent and marred by injury. He's played just 19 games through the first two seasons of his career. It's a short time period, but he just hasn't managed to stay on the field, and he even managed to get surgery before the season even started. That's not a good sign. And on top of the injury, there's always drama around him. Now, it's possible that Tony is back in week one. We don't 100% know, but it does sound like it's leaning in that direction. But when you look up and down ADP and see the value that other Chiefs receivers like Sky Moore and Rasheed Rice offer, drafting a guy who has been extremely unreliable as a fantasy asset just doesn't feel like it's worth it. Moving on to another player that has been plagued by injury issues. General fantasy advice says that if the backfield is ambiguous, you take the cheapest piece. DeAndre Swift is by far the most expensive piece of the Eagles backfield. I hate to have Swift on this list because from a pure talent perspective, I love what he brings to the table. If he was given a true lead back role in the right offense, I do think that he could thrive. In 2021, Swift had 62 receptions in 13 games, a 17 game pace that would place him just over 80 receptions. That is overall RB1 type of workload. And contrary to popular belief, Swift is no slouch on the ground. He averaged 5.47 yards per carry last season but much like Darius Tony, Swift just can't manage to stay healthy. Now, Swift has never missed a significant amount of time, but the big problem is that it isn't always big Rashad Penny-like injuries that really get a running back. Swift gets banged up and just straight up struggles to play through it. Last year, Swift had nine games with under 50% snap count. 
And if you up that to 60%, it's every single game last season outside of the first game. He just doesn't seem to have the capacity to operate as a true lead back. On the opposite end of Swift, Dalvin Cook is a guy who has finished as an RB1 in either overall or average points per game in every single season for the past four years. Cook has been the true definition of a workhorse running back, but those days are behind him, unfortunately, and it's not his fault. He's coming off a season with 264 carries, nearly 1,200 yards, and eight touchdowns. If money weren't an issue, he would still be an RB1 for some team. But we're living in a times where running back contracts are a major concern, and because of that, Cook now finds himself in a committee with Brees Hall despite still having that RB1 juice. We don't have a ton of specifics around how this backfield will be split, and we have zero clue what Hall's timeline on recovery is and what type of workload he'll have early on. If you followed my other videos on 444, this is not the first time that you've seen the concerns around the risk level for both Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall. They're both extremely risky options, but risk, again, it doesn't always mean 100% fade, but when it comes to Dalvin Cook, he is definitely on the fade side for me more compared to Brees Hall. He's being drafted right where he would finish. He may overperform early on as they ease Hall back from injury, but if Cook's role faces any reduction late season, he will be worthless to you. I just don't see the upside. It's a hard pass for me. And my final player we'll wrap things up with is someone who I also hate to put on this list, but I do have to do it. It's George Kittle. He's being drafted as the tight end four with an overall ADP of 46. And while that might not seem like a bad deal because he did finish as the tight end three last year, so getting him as the tight end four seems pretty good, right? Well, let's really put this into perspective. We have to consider that the drop off from Travis Kelsey to literally anyone else outside of Mark Andrews is extremely dramatic. So the value for what you're getting to him compared to other players being drafted around him, not so good. That's the issue. It's the payoff at his overall ADP being so low compared to the other players being drafted around him. And when you look at the tight ends being drafted after him, those are guys that can realistically finish as the tight end four. So why draft Kittle as the first guy off the board in that range of guys that are kind of a little bit shaky-ish? And then you can wait later, draft a guy like Darren Waller, Kyle Pitts, Dallas Goddard. Those are all guys that can finish as top five tight ends very realistically, and you're getting them at a lower ADP. If his ADP falls and he's going further in drafts, I'm not opposed to drafting him, but at his current ADP and his overall ADP, it's just not worth it. It's a 100% fade. I can't afford it. You can't afford it. You have to fade him, please, unless he falls further in the fantasy draft. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and comment below as well what you think of these fades. And if you want more fantasy insights and tips, head over to 444.com slash plans and sign up for a subscription today. And exclusively for our YouTube audience, use promo code YouTube at checkout to save 25%.